With interest rates going down, you would expect prices in Dallas to go up, but that's not how Realtor.com sees it. For 2024, they predict home prices to drop and the volume of home sales to drop even more. We need to figure out why. Well, hello, hello, I'm Wendy Pinnell, and Realtor.com doesn't have anything good to say about Dallas this year. They're predicting the amount, you know, the volume of home sales will be down 12.9% year over year and down a whopping 35.3% compared to the average number of sales between 2017 to 2019. They also predict the median sales price will be down 8.4% year over year. And when it comes to mortgage rates, they're saying 6.5% by the end of the year. So let me get this straight. Housing inventory, mortgage rates, and home prices are all going to drop? Well, this certainly doesn't bode well for my credibility. In March of last year, I put out a video where I told you that when interest rates go down, monthly payments become more affordable, so home prices go up. Well, clearly, either I need to eat crow or figure out what other wild cards Realtor.com is seeing. So I decided it was worth the research and worth the video. So why does Realtor.com think there can be a drop in both rates and prices at the same time. Well, their first contention is that buyers will be less motivated this year. Interest rates will meander down, but it won't be a drastic enough change to start a home buying frenzy. All right, here's what they're saying. The shift from climbing to falling mortgage rates improves housing affordability, but saps some of the urgency home shoppers had previously sensed. So basically, they think buyers won't see enough of a drop to make them feel ready to buy. On the other hand, I know I'm not the only one who has seen article after article about the sheer amount of Dallas buyers wishing they could buy if only the housing market were a little more affordable. So what is actually going on with Dallas demand? I think if we're really gonna get to the bottom of this, we need to know if they're right about interest rates. So this is what is being forecast for interest rates in 2024. Now, like I said earlier, Realtor.com says it's going to be 6.5%, but it looks like they're the odd ones out in their prediction. Fannie Mae says 6%. Redfin says 6% and NAR says 6% too. So it turns out that Realtor.com is actually coming in on the high side and that distinction between six and a half and 6% is actually a pretty big difference. Okay, but how about our unmotivated buyer? Are they right about that, right? Because remember, they're saying half percent of a change in interest rates won't be enough to motivate buyers. Well, I think a key variable here is how many people buy in Dallas because they want to and how many don't have the choice, okay? Because we could easily put buyers like into four categories, right? We have our discretionary movers who are either local or relocating, and then we have moves of necessity that are either local or relocating. So obviously it's your discretionary ones that'll make decisions based on how motivated they are by interest rate changes. Now, how much an area is impacted by the four types of buyers? It's an interesting point because market demand is strongly driven by relocators here. I mean, it hasn't been a frenzy, but it really hasn't been all that slow either. In fact, D Magazine reports that the Dallas-Fort Worth Arlington Metro had the fastest rate of growth of any area in the US last year. Now here at home in Dallas, personally, we've definitely seen this, okay? Over the past couple of years, I'd say we've had more buyers relocating from other states than we've had buyers who already live here. That's why I wasn't surprised to hear D Magazine share that the DFW area had an annual increase of 170,396 people between 2021 and 2022. So if the housing market is significantly driven by relocators, then we have to think about how much of that relocation is discretionary, okay? In other words, how many people relocate to Dallas because they want to, and how many don't have the choice regardless of interest rates, okay? So for example, that would be like a job or military transfer, okay, that sort of thing. And I can tell you, returning to the office mandates is playing a large role here, okay? I know personally, many of our buyers have already been working you know, in Dallas, so to speak, but it's been entirely remote. Well, now that they have to return to the office, they're actually having to physically move here. So less discretionary moves and more mandatory ones. Okay, but while we're on this topic of buyers and how much motivation has to do with it, let's go ahead and talk about shadow buyers. Now, shadow buyers are buyers who would jump into the market the minute rates go down. All right, so this would be the definition of discretionary, right? And we have several clients who would fall into this category right now. If shadow buyers 
begin joining relocators in the house hunt, okay, it could very well cause a frenzy. But Realtor.com is saying 6.5% isn't enough to motivate them, okay? So are they right? Well, let's run some numbers to see just how much more affordable homes would be at a 6.5% rate, okay? So let's take a $400,000 mortgage, okay? At 7%. That gives you a monthly payment of 2,661, while the same mortgage, 400,000 at six and a half percent, gives you a monthly payment of 25,28. Okay, so that's a difference of just $133 a month. So it's not like a huge savings there. But what if rates do drop to 6%? Well, that would mean a mortgage of 2398 and a difference of $263 per month. So might that bring out our discretionary relocators and shadow buyers, okay? Might it bring them out in droves? Well, definitely comment below because I would love to hear your opinions. I suppose it's possible both nationally as well as locally that our discretionary buyers won't jump into the market over a half to 1%. I mean, that really is a tough one to call. But there is no denying relocating moves of necessity have had a huge, impact on Dallas home prices. We continue to see more and more relocators and moves of necessity, and they really don't have the option to be motivated or unmotivated by the interest rate, all right? That's just not so much a variable for them. Now, what's interesting is Realtor.com didn't provide any reasons for why relocating would slow down. The unmotivated buyer moving, you know, purely for discretional reasons, you know, or should I say like not moving at all? I mean, I really don't think that's enough of a reason to justify a price plummet in Dallas, right? And Realtor.com didn't provide any data that would change relocating patterns in Dallas. Okay, so let's see what other reasons Realtor.com is using to support their data. Another thing they talk about is how remote jobs affect Dallas home prices. And I think this is very interesting and makes a lot of sense. All right, listen to this. Markets with less flexible work arrangements are predicted to show an average year over year growth in existing home sales of 0.6%, while markets with more flexible work modes are anticipated to experience a 4.9% annual decline in sales. They continue saying home shoppers confined to local searches due to their work constraints will boost local sales activities. Conversely, markets with more flexible work modes provide shoppers the option to explore homes beyond their immediate vicinity and thus will experience a decline in sales activities. We have definitely seen a change in work arrangements over the last year. And many of you have been called back to the office, but it's usually anywhere from one to three days a week. So that did get me to thinking about where Dallas falls in the work mode arena and what that might need for our home prices. Realtor.com designates Dallas as a more flexible work mode in a less affordable urban market. So that's point number two now for Realtor.com's forecast. And they're basically saying Dallas as a whole has a more flexible work mode, which allows buyers more choices and more supply, which will ultimately result in lower prices. But Dallas's flexible work mode wasn't the only thing I found to support Realtor.com's claim of Dallas home prices decreasing this year. Another one is a rental supply in Dallas may very well outpace demand for buying homes. Realtor.com describes it this way, less frenzied housing demand and plenty of rental home options keep home sales relatively stable at low levels in 2024. And I think they're onto something. So let's talk about rental home options for a minute. I mean, I believe this is actually a huge factor in our housing market. Steve Brown with the Dallas Morning News reports that Dallas-Fort Worth is the country's top apartment building market with more than 69,000 rental units under construction at the end of 2023. Now I hear you saying, you know, apartments are completely different than homes, right? And I completely agree, but bear with me for a minute, okay? Because the thing is that Dallas is just as big into build to rent single family homes as they are with apartment buildings. In the same article, Brown describes how a builder who used to focus on apartment buildings has now received the funding to begin a large rental community in Arlington. The community is called the Grove at La Frontrera, and it'll have 60 bungalow style single family rental homes, as well as 336 mid-rise apartments. It then goes on to describe how this company has done the same thing in Allen, Richardson, and Rowlett, and I know of another community just like it that was recently built out in Saxe. But listen to how Steve Brown describes this particular community, okay, because this is important. He says, the rental community will include two resort-style pools, fitness center, 
pickleball courts, a dog park, a clubhouse with a coffee bar, and co-working spaces. He continues, the property will have walking trails, a putting green, a community garden, and pocket parks. Now, what does this sound like to you? Because to me, it sounds exactly like your typical master plan community that comes with a mortgage payment and hefty HOA dues. Well, if we take this information and combine it with the fact that in Dallas, at today's interest rates, renting is cheaper than buying in many areas, we're beginning to see some major reasons why some buyers may just choose to continue renting. I mean, why pay a few thousand dollars a month in combined mortgage, insurance, and HOA fees when you can only pay a couple of thousand in rent with the same kinds of amenities? Plus, as a renter, you no longer have to be financially responsible when your AC unit stops working in the middle of July. Realtor.com even comments on this themselves saying renting is expected to continue to be a more budget-friendly option than buying. So with renting cheaper in many places and rentals having this many amenities, you can see why renting would soften buyer demand. I mean, high interest rates versus affordable build-to-rent communities with tons of amenities will mean a pretty equal competition between renting and single family home sales. Now, at the end of the day, a rent house isn't going to be that appreciating asset we'd like to see, but with that sparkling pool, you know, and anemic interest rate drops, it may be hard for people to see past that. Now, I mentioned earlier that Realtor.com is predicting the number of home sales will be down 12.9% year over year and down 35.3% from the 2017 to 2019 average. Now, what I want you to remember is those years were normal markets, okay? So we're not talking about the pandemic, right, with the housing demand explosion, right? These years were just a reasonably normal housing market. Well, believe it or not, it's not that Realtor.com is all doom and gloom. They listed plenty of metros that are hot areas where they're expecting sales and prices to leap, but Dallas didn't feel any of the love. Unfortunately, they didn't leave us wondering and actually commented on the topic. They say that Southern metros are absent from this year's list, likely in part due to more favorable inventory conditions propped up by new construction. They continue, new construction offers buyers more inventory, which relieves price pressure and creates a more balanced market as existing homeowners choose not to sell. Then they drop this bombshell, as a result, Southern metros are not expected to see existing home sales and prices climb as high as other regions as buyers have more new construction options. Now, it's interesting that unlike everyone else spouting out articles about how Dallas has a serious shortage of housing supply, Realtor.com actually uses the overabundance of new construction inventory to back up their predictions for this year, and it's not totally far-fetched either. I mean, we all know the basics of economics, right? An overabundance of supply lessens demand and then vice versa. But here's our big problem in Dallas, and I think really any area with a lot of new construction, and it's that the data is skewed by the sheer amount of new construction inventory that's not listed. You see, builders don't list all of their completed homes on the MLS, which is where experts are looking to find their data. I'm sure you've all heard people talking about how we have a housing supply shortage, but here's the thing. They can't even put together accurate data in order to show that shortage. In reality, when we start to add in the data of new construction inventory homes, the DFW area has numerous seriously overbuilt areas. For example, if I look up MLS data right now, it shows Dallas has a three month supply of inventory. All right, many Dallas housing market videos are gonna to point to that and say we have a seller's market and a housing shortage. But if I go to the website newhomesource.com and what that website is, is that's a website that lists new construction. Well, if I take that website and compare it to the MLS in Denton County, new home source has almost twice as many homes for sale listed as the MLS does. Okay, so we're talking a difference of 658 more new construction homes. And check out Collin County. It has 1,009 more listings on new home source than the MLS. Dallas County came in with a difference of 930 homes for sale. Tarrant County takes first place with 1,160 more homes for sale on new home source. And finally, Ellis County with 46 more listings. Here's how those numbers add up. The MLS total is 3,744 and your new home source total is 7,547. Okay, so that's a difference of 3,803 new construction homes that are not on the MLS. Now that's a lot of homes Realtor.com may be seeing that other realtors aren't. Now keep in mind that these numbers are only of the inventory homes, okay? They don't even include all of the many buyers out there who are buying lots from the builders 
and building new homes from the ground up. So that brings us back to the same question, okay? Is Realtor.com right? Are we going to see both rates and home prices drop? Okay, so well, one fundamental thing we do know, okay, is that when rates go down, buying power goes up and prices usually go up with it. So if that very cause and effect event isn't going to occur, okay, the only way I can see both rates and price decreases happening at the same time is through like an enormous amount of supply, you know, landing like a wet blanket on Dallas home prices. We're talking rent choices that are just as good, if not better than buying and new construction supply saturating the entire DFW area. It won't likely come from pre-owned homes, right? Because owners with 3% interest rates may very well still stay put, even with rates coming down a little bit. And keep in mind, the amount of supply I'm talking about would need to far exceed how many people are relocating to Dallas. The supply has got to be greater than the demand. So how far are we? from this kind of situation. All right, well, we are already seeing new construction saturation and the consequent drop in prices in several of our lower demand areas across the Metroplex. The issue is it's not uniform. Our highest demand areas that we find in places like Frisco and Prosper and Salina, they're not showing that massive amount of oversupply yet, okay? Don't get me wrong, there is a lot out there, but it is being absorbed. But then you have all the lower demand areas, okay? And many of them are seriously hurting, okay? You have lots of suburbs with reasonably short commutes, okay? We're talking new construction too, but lower rated schools. So I'm talking about areas like Mansfield, Midlothian, Waxahachie, Ovilla, Grand Prairie, Mesquite, okay, even some in Garland. Now all of these suburbs are only like a quick 30 minute drive from downtown Dallas, but the school districts are hurting their desirability and sales are suffering. Then you have suburbs with long commutes, but excellent high rated schools, okay? Like Wiley, all of Rockwall County, Argyle, okay? These have outstanding rated schools, but a longer commute. I mean, I can negotiate fantastic deals all day long in these areas. All right, then of course you have suburbs with both long commutes and lower rated schools, okay? And these areas are hurting most of all, you know, from all of the supply and high rates. Now, our short commute areas with new construction and excellent schools, demand is more or less matching supply for now. Okay, and I say for now because they're putting out like huge amounts of homes right now. Like I just this morning read of another 4,000 home development going up in Salina. Okay, so right now that's an area to watch because they're putting a ton out there, but we're not really seeing like the oversaturation yet. But now when we think about like all of our other areas that for one reason or another just are not in like really high demand in those areas, okay, it is not pretty. All right, builders are hurting. They're exposed, right? And I did an entire video about how exposed they are. You can watch that video right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.